now we are. Yeah, now yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah, now we're. We are now live. So, uh, okay. Welcome to everyone's favorite Thursday evening watching experience, the coordinating collective meeting. Um, as always, we start with a big picture, an overview of what's happening in Europe, the new normal that we find ourselves in, and the role that DM25 will have to play as uh, we move forward and out of the lockdown and into a new period of uncertainty in Europe. Who, who would like to kick us off with the big picture? And Yanis, I'm looking at you, traditionally. Okay. Uh, you're looking for a volunteer and you found one. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Pavel. Um, well, a couple of things and then something specific, a couple of general things. Um, one dimension of this latest phase of, of Europe's crisis and global cap, the, the global capitalist crisis of the pandemic um, it, 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 it's a very important dimension which is never discussed. The Euro crisis resulted in a major, major um, stagnation and falling back of the European Union relative to China and relative to the United States. Every time there's a large scale crisis, Europe falls behind technologically, socially, macroeconomic at every level. The Euro crisis compared to the manifestations of the global crisis in the United States, in China, in India, in everywhere else, Europe lost a decade. And it seems to me that this current phase of the crisis is even more dangerous for Europe. Uh, and let, let me make a very simple point to highlight this. If you look at European industry, at the leading giants in Germany, in France, in Italy, in Belgium, in Holland, uh, their, their success stories in terms of global capitalist competitiveness are uh, companies that produce stuff, gadgets. They produce um, complicated machines. They produce um, feats of engineering. Yeah. Uh, and they produce stuff based on long supply chains, usually ending up in China. Tangible things, real things. That's not a criticism, it's a fact. Okay. Uh, whereas the, the United States, on the other hand, is um, concentrating its wealth creation, or wealth extraction, if you want to put it that way, in uh, creating monopolies, digital monopolies, like Facebook and so on. Which of the two do you think suffer the most as a result of the pandemic? It's clear that it's the engineering processes of the European Union's big business that suffer the most uh, and which will find it very, very difficult to recover. Whereas if anything, the Amazons and the Facebooks and so on, uh, together with the IP rights, um, have been boosted immensely in the United States by the pandemic. So, setting aside for a moment the, the symmetric shock to the, to, to, to the whole capitalist planetary system, there are asymmetries across the Atlantic. The relative hegemony of the United States over the European Union has been magnified magnificently by this crisis. And the lack of an industrial plan in Europe uh, the complete lack of an industrial plan, of an investment plan in Europe, uh, which exists in the United States. In the United States, they have the Pentagon. The Pentagon is a machine uh, that plans investments. And together with uh, all the government um, projects and um, grants going to the medical industrial complex, uh, the United States is like a Soviet Union in terms of central planning of um, its technological innovations, whereas the European Union has nothing. Even when they're talking about the European champions, yeah, what they're talking about is creating a cartels between existing dinosaurs. That's not going to help very much in the future. So that's one point I wanted to make. The second point I wanted to make, which I will elaborate further in an article, um, hopefully during the weekend, once I catch up with some sleep, um, is my increasing conviction that the so-called great uh, 
um, recovery fund that the European Commission is putting together is an instrument of class, of class war against the poor. Uh, the manner in which it is being used firstly in order to hide for the fact that uh, it does nothing to ameliorate for the austerity drive that is hitting us next year. It just covers it up. Everybody talks about the, you know, the hundreds of billions of euros that will um, be spread around uh, as a cover up for the fact that there's going to be a huge austerity drive, which will be far more macroeconomically significant than any of the money that comes through this recovery fund when they agree to it, they have some, still not agreed to it. And secondly, the way in which they will distribute this money, the way in which they will distribute this money and the conditionalities that go with it is going to intensify uh, an already intense class war against the many in Europe. But that's just, you know, if you want the abstract, um, watch this space, or not this space, our site for an article that I will be coming up with. And let me finish off by saying that I've, if I look tired, it is because I am dead tired. I've just come back driving through hellish conditions. Um, see how black I am? <laughs> It's from those hellish conditions on the motorway from Thessaloniki to Athens, came back from Thessaloniki. Um, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because MERA 25, our electoral wing here in Greece, uh, we presented on Monday in Athens and uh, yesterday morning in Thessaloniki um, a very large piece of legislative work. We have tabled for public discussion and deliberation before submitting it to Parliament as a proposed piece of legislation in September, uh, we tabled, um, I think a quite magnificent, multi-dimensional uh, uh, bill, which includes provisions for uh, nationalizing the banks, uh, institutions that um, um, end the sale of non-performing loans of um, families and of small business to funds, the replacement of, the, of, of this scheme for selling the non-performing loans uh, on, um, the replacement includes the creation of a public bad bank where all the bad loans are accumulated uh, in order to be restructured without any evictions and any repossessions of main residents and small businesses. Uh, be, besides that, we have specific piece, bits of legislation that concern the creation of um, an autonomous uh, public revenues office, autonomous from the government, but also from the Troika, unlike the one we have now, which completely belongs to the Troika, uh, and a new in green investment bank, which is a result, and that's, that, that is quite, of, of, of some significance. Uh, what we do is we take the fund that the Troika created in which they placed all public property in order to sell it, to privatize it. We take this um, you know, bunch of public property and we merge it with a development bank, a Greek development bank. Effectively, the property of the Greek state is no longer for sale, but becomes the collateral, it becomes the capital base of the new investment bank. Anyway, I won't bother you with it. It's a very large piece of legislation. It comes to more than 100 pages. Uh, and I have to say, you know, this is, this is um, a, a, a good example for DiEM as a whole of what we mean by constructive disobedience. We say no, no, no hmm, to the recovery fund, to the austerity packages, to the privatization drives, to um, all those things that are depleting human resources and our environment. But we do not stop at disobedience. We do not stop at saying no. We have the constructive part. We say, this is what we could legislate today. And I finish off with this. Every word in that bill that we are presenting is consistent with European law. Every bit of it. This was the hard part, okay? In, a, in exactly the same way that our Green New Deal, everything we proposed, you know, from the alliance between the, between the European Investment Bank and the European Central Bank and so on, is completely legal and completely within 
the, at least the letter of the treaties of the Euro European Central Bank uh, um, statutes and so on. Similarly, everything we are proposing is within the letter and even the spirit of European legislation, European treaties, the, the ECB's charter and so on. What it clashes with is the Troika's will. And we're very proud of that. Wonderful, thank you so much, Yanis. Do we have any reflections on what Yanis just said, any comments or any other perspectives on where we are today? Srechko? Yeah, I mean, I would actually love to see a woman speaking. So I give my place if there is someone who wants to take my place. <laughs> So it's not usually just Yanis or me speaking at the beginning. Anyone? Okay, if there is no one, uh, I just have a short uh, update from, from Eastern Europe, from the Balkans, which is connected to the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, as you probably followed in the news about Zadar, Novak Djokovic and all this stuff, uh, Croatia is again becoming a hotspot mainly on the coast uh, because and it's not just about Croatia you can see that it's coming back unfortunately Jordi is not here but you've seen what, what's happening in Spain again and so on um, and I think we have to analyze the situation also see what we can do in this kind of situation because I don't think everyone is talking about the second wave uh, but it's still the first wave uh, and what you have as a situation in countries which are heavily dependent maybe this is connected to Greece as well on tourism is that you have a situation of, you know, softer lockdown and so on and infections rising and spreading all across the place now. I mean, not just Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia, Macedonia, but also Spain. Uh, and my fear is actually that this situation is becoming a sort of permanent interregnum, as Antonio Gramsci would call it, you know, but Gramsci said after the interregnum, there is something to come, you know, but I don't think there is anything to come. It will be just like that during all summer. I mean, that's how it looks to me now, uh, which also then poses the question, what does DiEM do in this kind of situation? Uh, which will bring us to DiEM TV, which is part of the agenda as well, you know, because there is a big question, what kind of actions? I mean, Yanis, you said you just traveled. I, I guess also the situation is bad because of the whole situation on the highways and so on. Uh, so I think it will be it will still be difficult also for us to meet physically all together uh, before autumn or winter. And this is something we have to take into consideration that the CC didn't meet uh, since seven, eight months or something like that, which is not quite normal for, for our operation. Um, so yeah, I just want to flag that, that the situation is getting worse day by day. Uh, and speaking about the Balkans and Croatia, uh, our support for the Croatian Green Left coalition uh, was very well received and they asked uh, they asked Sasha uh, sorry for uh, so, and they asked if it's possible that Yanis could send a very short quote uh, which they might use then in the newspapers in the press release and so on so Yanis when you're less tired I'll come back to you <laughs> to ask you for it but so don't worry it's something very short but don't think about it now um, yeah that's it from me I'd love to hear others. Maybe, maybe you did from Germany. What is the situation like in Germany? I don't know. And then we can go to DMTV or an other part of the agenda. Well, nothing really new in, in Germany. It's like every other country. The government is, um, well, the government has more funds, but they spend them all uh, on the companies. And uh, um, basically, there is no, no relief fund uh, for the uh, the the, uh, the poorest of the poor even uh, families uh, are getting relief uh, but if you're on welfare you're not getting anything so it's ridiculous um and uh, what i'm mostly worried about these days is that um uh, germany is opening uh, up again um in Berlin, uh, they will soon allow gatherings of up to a thousand people again, and we still have rising case loads. I mean, our is uh, above two right now in Germany, um, and also what we're seeing is um, cases uh, like there's one company in uh, is, uh, in um, a part of Western uh, Germany that had uh, uh, it's it's um, what, what do you call it a place where animals uh, gets uh, gets slaughtered and uh, Slaughterhouse. Uh, they, Slaughterhouse. Yeah, yeah. Slaughterhouse. Yeah. They call it a house. 
<laughs> they have mainly Eastern European workers uh, living in very bad uh, conditions, and they had like 1,200 uh, positive cases just from the employees uh, of, of that one company. Yeah, I find that maybe just one comment. I find that very interesting because you have a class component again. You know, in Croatia, it was tennis, which is, you know, reserved for the higher classes who can afford it to travel and play tennis. And in the Western Europe, you know, which again proves our thesis of DM25 about the center and the periphery of the European Union, uh, you have the cheap labor force uh, uh, from Eastern Europe getting infected, uh, working shitty jobs and so on. So, yeah, class question again back. Yeah, and now, and now we've got uh, inner, inner German uh, discrimination because uh, people uh, from uh, this uh, district where the slaughterhouse is based, uh, around 800,000 people, uh, are now being uh, prevented uh, from traveling to the typical holiday um, uh, provinces in, uh, in Germany. And um, some are saying they're not welcome in the restaurants in surrounding cities and so on. Yanis, can I have a quick one? Um, what I heard about the, the slaughterhouse is that um, it, it's a combination of the low temperatures, uh, the fact that there are so many packed workers, and also that they yell at one another because of the noise. And when you yell, you know, the, 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 the droplets travel a lot more. Um, maybe we should consider this kind of working environment to be an acceptable COVID-19 or no COVID-19 both for the animals that get slaughtered and, 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 and for the people who, who work under those soul crushing situations. One thing that, that uh, the one thing that I wanted to tell you though is because, look, we are doing remarkable stuff as DiEM and we don't even get, remember that what we've done and we don't even talk to each other about it. And I just remembered, look, the main reason why I went to, to, to Thessaloniki, besides presenting that um, um, piece of legislation in Thessaloniki, but the main reason is because, uh, um, and that's um, something I'm not sure all the members know. Um, our party, our electoral wing, because we are in parliament, have been granted a certain uh, um, amount of euros uh, to run our affairs, to pay for, for our uh, basic needs as a functioning uh, parliamentary party. But when the pandemic struck, and its you know, significance uh, was revealed, we decided we're going to give a substantial chunk of that uh, allowance um, to the, the health service and to other um, solidarity structures. So today, uh, this morning, uh, to, together with another two members of parliament, uh, we went to a hospital in Thessaloniki and we presented them with a piece of machinery that cost 15,000 euros um, uh, out of the money that the party could have used uh, to hire people to do things. Uh, so DMR should know of this. Um, it's a large program. We have um, spent about 100,000 euros uh, of money that we could have spent on DM on MERA. Uh, but it was, I think, imperative, morally imperative, given that this is public money given to us, uh, that we supported the National Health Service, as well as uh, social movement uh, structures out there on the street working with the homeless and so on and so forth. Um, we, there are around eight or nine such small projects helping different um, um, either public um, health service um, uh, units or you know, activists out there. Um, just note, note that because it has had a pretty good impact both on our members here in Greece and um, uh, in the regarding the, the public's eye. Thank you, Anis. Eric, you had your hand up a little earlier. 
I mean, we're a bit over time with this particular topic, so I'll give you the summarized version of the Brussels briefing, if you like. One of the big uh, words on the street here is about the funding that the European Commission had given for um, researching the peddling of falsehoods by China regarding the COVID-19 crisis, so the misinformation around how many cases there were in China and so on. Um, and that money will be coming to an end. It was around 6 million euros. It will be coming to an end at the end of the year. So there's a huge yes, conversation I, I, going on right now in Brussels about Europe's relationship to China in general, uh, not only within the concept of uh, uh, false news, but more generally about our cooperation with China. And it coincides, I think, with a discussion being had by some members of our peace and international relations thematic DSC of potentially creating a international relations pillar for DM25. Uh, I think Ivana has more information about that, but we can discuss a bit uh, at a later point. Um, I, I just think it's the timing is good because uh, there's already been a quite a bit of discussion on geopolitics in previous CC meetings as well. Um, but also this is something that is coming to Brussels uh, and is going to come big uh, regarding China specifically. Thank you, Eric. Uh, we've gone far over time on the first agenda item, so why don't we move on to the next one, which is the MTV. Had an incredibly exciting lineup of speakers and guests in last season, from Roger Waters to Stephanie Kelton to our very own Rosemary Beckler. And that season is now coming to an end, so I'd like to invite Srechko to, uh, to give his, share his reflections on where we were and where we go next with DMTV. Thanks, Pavel. Uh, I will, of course, involve uh, my co-conspirator. I mean, there are many, but uh, one of them is David. Uh, it would be impossible also without Judith and Yanis. Uh, I think those are the people who did the biggest share, Ivana and all those coordinated collective members who agreed to moderate. It wasn't really easy at the beginning to get anyone to, to join BMTV uh, because it started as a crazy idea from quarantine in Vienna where I had this idea that we should just have this kind of online uh, content. What you can see now in the meantime is that you have a hyperinflation of online content uh, and uh, that BMTV also reached a sort of peak uh, summer is coming, lockdown is not in place in every country and so on, and people are tired of what Naomi Klein, I think rightly called the screen new deal, so not the green new deal, but the screen new deal, the fact that we are all living in these bloody screens, uh, but I think DMTV precisely in this kind of context was very successful, so it was watched by more than 2 million people in the meantime, I think it's in that way it is one of the most successful products of DM25 in such a short time of a few months um, and I mean the most important thing for our members to say is that we are going on a summer break <laughs> I think that's something what everyone here in this team needs uh, so not only a summer break of the coordinating collective but a summer break of team TV uh, I see Yanis already went for a break because he's very tired <laughs> so he's not with us anymore yeah, we are going on a summer break and uh, we will use the summer, uh, a small team inside of the coordinating collective to discuss about the future of DMTV. I think it's, uh, we are all in agreement that uh, DMTV would come back in autumn, uh, but that means that we won't show any DMTV programs uh, during the summer break. Of course, there is DMTV, which is the main program uh, with high profile guests uh, chosen mainly by the coordinating collective members. Um, and there is DMTV. Uh, local, uh, which I think can go on because it is self-organized, so it doesn't need our support because when we have DMTV, it means Judith or David has to be online and they had to be online every day uh, during the lockdown and quarantine, so it was really hard work and everyone needs a rest. Uh, what we are doing in the meantime is uh, Renata and me, uh, mainly the two of us, actually the two of us are editing a major book which will be five, 700 pages with transcripts of, of most of the team TV shows, which should be published in the United States in autumn. Uh, so that's something I'm working on the next two, three weeks, Renata as well, maybe it will take a month, but again, it will be great because we will have all these conversations at one place and then it will get published and so on in other languages. As you know, all the earnings of this book will go to DM25. So me, Renat, and so don't earn anything. We are actually volunteering again for it. Uh, so that's something what will happen in the meantime. We are also discussing me and David to see whether we can 
uh, launch a very simple website with all the videos on that website. That's something we didn't have time yet. And then, of course, during summer, we will also discuss a sort of protocol, uh, uh, you know, in what way programs are proposed for the main program and so on, in what way are the guests chosen and so on. Because at the beginning, it was rather spontaneous. It was me and a couple of people doing it. Uh, but from autumn, we want to professionalize it a bit. Uh, hopefully also invest something into it, you know, a better studio, cameras or whatever. Uh, but this is something we have time for that. I think we can all be happy uh, how it turned out. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's continue after autumn. But I give the word to David because there is also something coming in the meantime, which is, of course, uh, the short videos, archive videos and blah, blah, blah. Maybe you, David, can just say something. What, is, what are the other things you were, have been working on and what can we wait, wait for until autumn? Thanks, Srechko. Um, well, you've said so much already, so I'll try and talk about the things that you didn't perhaps mention. I think the first thing I wanted to say is that uh, I would like to say a big thank you to everybody who's been following us and watching all our episodes, or maybe not all of them, but at least some of them, and who have been inspired to join DM and to participate in our um, in our movement. So a big thank you to you. Some of you perhaps are watching now. I don't know. But uh, in any case, if you haven't seen the episodes, make sure you check out our playlist. Um, there's a couple of different playlists called DMTV and you can watch all the shows uh, back and forth. The, you can also watch them as podcasts on SoundCloud. If you go to soundcloud.com slash DM25, uh, you can you can listen to all of those um, those episodes if you're in you know, I don't know at the gym or something uh, that you where you can't necessarily be watching a video. Um, now, in terms of what's coming next, uh, one of the things that uh, I'm, we're doing now, and this is also why we need a little bit of a break, uh, is we're looking at all the episodes that we've had, and I think there have been over 40 with more than 2 million views. So we're, ma we're making little clips. Uh, we've already started this work. It's almost finalized. So over the next couple of weeks, if you didn't watch the full episodes, you will be able to watch little snippets, two minute clips on YouTube, no, sorry, on Twitter, on Instagram, etc. cetera. And, uh, that would, and then if you want to watch the full videos, you'll be able to click on a link and watch the full thing if that's what you would like to do. And I would encourage you to do that, obviously. Um, besides that, of course, we'll have a discussion as well about, you know, what does it mean? Where do we want to take the MTV from here on end in terms of, you know, upgrading the digital infrastructure, uh, in terms of having maybe a sp specific space on the website? I don't know. These are discussions that we'll, we'll be having, uh, continue to have until uh, we restart the, the, the program in, in autumn. We don't have a date for the restarting yet, but perhaps September, October, around then. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. Uh, there'll be more information coming from us on this point. And um, yeah, it we'll be back. We'll be back. So don't, uh, don't despair. And thanks again. Great. Thank you both for the updates. Um, are there any very quick points to note or questions on this, or can we move on to the next agenda item? Judith, did I see a hesitant? I also saw a hesitant hand by Judith or finger. I don't know what it was. <laughs> no, it's, it's not really a question. I, I thought that um, it's good to say that uh, the DM local TV will continue, right? So we're saying DM TV is taking a break, but actually people can still tune in like uh, once or twice a week and watch stuff. Precisely. I think I mentioned that, but anyhow, we have to be clear that uh, we love DMTV local program, and I think it's great that we also have this kind of self-organized events, which we also cherish and actually encourage people to do. Uh, but the main program is going on a break. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah, uh, it's been four months and so on. And for the reasons mentioned, uh, we need to assess the previous season and then prepare the next season. But in the meantime, there will be DMTV. And if, I don't know, something urgent happens, which is happening every day, actually, in the world, who knows, maybe we, appear, we reappear sooner. But we are here in the live stream anyhow, so it's like DMTV. <laughs> Great, thank you both. So next up, Johannes is going to give us a very quick update about volunteer coordination in the end. Yes, thanks, Pavel. Uh, and uh, yeah, also thanks to the great work um, uh, for the DMTV program. And um, actually, I can start with um, yeah, saying that the last month, uh, I and uh, many other people worked uh, hard on um, establishing an onboarding system for all these people coming in, wanting to help with translation and also the subtitling for the DMTV episode, where we had a lot of content. Um, 
and we had a lot of people joining. We built up a whole process that we are also uh, looking forward to revising now over summer and make even better. I had great help from many people coming in and bringing their ideas into making this whole processes even, even better. We had uh, people contributing with uh, subtitles to the um, DMTV episodes that will now go into the book a project that Srechko mentioned, which is great. Um, and also, um, yeah, for our main languages, we have uh, the groups um, pretty up and running. Greek and Portuguese could uh, use, uh, use some more volunteers. Um, and we also um, are expanding towards Turkish, Dutch, um, the nice combination of Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, which uh, some of our volunteers decided to bring together um, in cooperation with Ivana with, I think it's a very good good idea to do that together. Also now on our website, it's, it's one language kind of, um, and Czech as well. And then of course, all the other European languages. So if you, um, watch now and want to help with um, yeah, bringing your uh, language forward that uh, I haven't mentioned now. So please, um, you can always uh, contact us uh, through volunteer at dm25.org. Um, we're also bringing in the whole design graphic videos department into the process, which will be something we do during, uh, during the summer. And um, also take a look at our thematic DSCs, which is a little bit more um, people that uh, make up DMS that make up spontaneous collectives working on thematic topics, which is a little bit different from the other um, tasks I've mentioned before. And since it was a very short uh, topic at our last call, um, in terms of transparency, you can find all all these groups when you go to our dm25.org website and actually click on the top right um, corner on groups where you can find an organigram that the IT team and you did um, uh, pro programmed where you can find a list of all groups and you can join them and uh, help out to make make our yeah our work even more uh, translate into more languages include more people uh, with helping. And yeah, that's all I wanted to bring um, as a little bit of an update from the volunteer area. Thank you so much, Johannes, and perfect timing. Uh, any comments on what Johannes just said? Judith. Yeah, um, I thought uh, since I wasn't there, um, Last uh, week, um, when you discussed the Prague uh, proposals, I thought um, this is a good opportunity to also tell you about the progress that uh, we've been making about um, the um, Prague uh, proposal to upgrade our digital collaboration infrastructure. And this ties in with what uh, Johannes has been saying. So uh, in the past months, uh, we have gradually uh, increased uh, the ability um, of uh, our collectives uh, to, uh, to work together through the integration of our different uh, platforms, uh, allowing uh, members uh, to find each other uh, without uh, the help of uh, this uh, coordinating collective. Uh, now we, this week, uh, we've just added the ability for task forces uh, to, uh, to find uh, collaborators that um, may be uh, relevant uh, to them. Uh, DSCs are able to, uh, to find local members. Um, thematic groups are able to, uh, to find um, people who are interested in the same uh, topic. This is something we did um, this, uh, this week. Um, we've also added uh, the um, integ uh, further integrated the forum with uh, the uh, groups so that when you're part of a group, you're automatically getting emails about everything that is uh, written in your uh, group forum. Um, and for the summer, the biggest improvement uh, that we're working on is uh, to create, um, well, there's actually two things. One is to create member profiles so that you're able to advertise that you're a member of DM25 and uh, find other members through their profile information. Uh, also as another way to allow members to connect with random other members um, and to create uh, like a stream of activity of what's uh, going on in DM25. And the CCA, um, 
in, uh, in an email exchange, uh, the CC has agreed uh, to make some funding available for that. So my team of uh, coders, uh, I've actually found uh, some volunteers who will be help helping to implement all that uh, over the summer. And if any coders are watching, they can also get in touch. Uh, there are still more tasks to do. Brilliant, exciting. DM 3.0 is going to be a social network. Sounds great. Um, next up, because we're out of time on that agenda item, we have a major campaign and policy formation proposal from Eric. Eric, do you want to take the floor? Cheers, mate. Yeah. So, uh, most of you probably have already seen the document that I've circulated. Uh, this is an idea that has come about based on all the calls we've been having as a CC, obviously. But on top of that, also all the Beyond the Balcony calls we've had with our coordinators and volunteers from around Europe, all of the uh, CC coordination calls we've had with the same people, but uh, not so much in public, behind the scenes. The feedback we've been receiving and the kind of uh, priorities we've been setting in the past few months, also with the AMVs that have gone through this month. Um, and the idea essentially is this, uh, we've recognized when we first got together in September as the new CC that one of the main things that DM25 needed to do, both in terms of the Green New Deal for Europe, but our policy proposals in general, is that we needed to ground those ideas and those proposals to the national context. Although we are a dedicated European movement with European policy proposals and European beliefs, principles and ideas, we need to translate those into um, recommendations and uh, policy proposals that mean something to everyday citizens, to the people that we want to, uh, to attract to the movement and to who we want to persuade of our concepts. Uh, that's es essentially what Meta did very well uh, and has been doing and continues to do very well. So this is something that a lot of our uh, bodies have had difficulty to achieve. Um, it's something that we have not been able to lead the way on either as a CC because we've been preoccupied with all the internal structural stuff so far. So the proposal, essentially, to allow DiEM to be reintroduced into society, to stop being a movement about itself, talking about itself, but to talk to citizens more broadly about the kind of Europe that they want to have, and therefore the kind of countries that they want to have within Europe, or the kind of communities, the kind of cities they want to have within the countries, within that Europe, um, and to strengthen our, our democratic credentials, to endow us with these kind of democratically created uh, policy proposals for all these countries is essentially to do uh, the following project. Now in July, to send out to all of our members uh, a request to send us the kinds of questions that they believe any political actor um, who is worthy of the name progressive needs to be able to answer in their countries in order to be relevant. So, first of all, what has COVID meant for your life? Uh, what has changed? What are the challenges you feel you will be facing, your community will be facing, your city or your country? Um, what are the main political topics in your country right now that you feel need, people need to have an answer to in order for people in your country or your city to flourish? So essentially crowdsource uh, questions from all over Europe about the most important political topics at different levels of political engagement collate all of those questions during the summer so that by September, we have questionnaires for different countries in Europe with all the hottest political questions there. And then in September, send those questionnaires out to our members, to our DRCs, to our NCs, to our electoral wings, and together with a toolkit, with a guide about how they can organize everything from a local tea party with their friends. You know, one member can organize a group with another five, six people where they come together and they pick some of these questions and they try and answer them and collate, collect those answers and send them back to the central level. The same goes for a DSC, can organize it at a bigger scale, a national collective can organize it at an even bigger scale, a citizens, uh, not a citizens assembly necessarily, but a democratic assembly of, of citizens who are brought together to try and respond to these questions. And it's very important that we do this beyond the DM bubble, that we do this in communities at large. This is a project that we coordinate in order to bring 
new people who are not perhaps aware of our project into DiEM25, but also engage society at large, um, thus also endowing us with a truly democratic um, project. We collect those answers and based on those answers, we spend six to eight months creating uh, what will essentially be the outline of political programs for different countries. Uh, so DiEM25's positioning, not just in Europe, but what that means specifically, let's say, for Germany. Um, yes, all of this, Claudia, exists in a document which was sent earlier today. And it will also be on the forum right after this. Uh, I will upload it so everyone can see it. Um, and we have all of these. And when we have this, um, apart from the fact that it's not just the creation of these programs that is the point, but the process through which we create them, right? The, the journey is the point in itself, that we do it in a way that is inclusive and engaging and so on and, and opens up DiEM to new people. But once we do have these programs, that also means that we have the foundation on which to not only design European projects, but national and local campaigns and projects that can be run by our NCs, um, by our DSCs and so on, we have a foundation about what DM25 stands for in different countries. Um, and this is something, of course, that will be uh, validated through all member votes and so on through that procedure. Uh, and of course, in those countries where we do have electoral wings, um, this can also act as the foundation for our electoral wings manifesto, uh, for our electoral activity. This is, not to, this is not a project that uh, solves all of our issues. We still need to invest a lot more on grassroots campaigning, local campaigns and so on. This does not happen through this project, but a lot of other boxes do get ticked. I think we will empower a big part of our membership. We will open up DiEM to a big part of our local communities. And uh, we will also uh, create very powerful tools for DiEM in a year, let's say from now, through the creation of these programs. And this is a very summarized version of everything. You have it in the document. You have the timeline there as well. Um, but we don't need to agree on anything today. We can have the discussion about how and whether we should do it next week. But if you have any questions about it, um, maybe it's a good opportunity to have a first round uh, of questions and a discussion uh, this week. So that's it for me, more or less. I hope I didn't miss anything major. Thank you, Eric. Uh, do we have any questions? Svechko? Yeah, I have no question, but I just want to congratulate Eric for, for taking the time and, and brain space to develop this kind of uh, proposal, uh, which I think is really important for, for the next phase of DiEM. Uh, so after the summer break, of course, we will have, uh, or during the summer break, unfortunately, we will also have coordinating collective uh, elections. Uh, which I think is also an important step for DiEM. And what Eric is outlining, I think, is, is, is really crucial because we need to reactivate uh, the local groups, we need to reactivate the electoral wings, uh, uh, and perhaps this would also help them to, 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 to work more closely. But it will also help us to assess the situation on the ground much better uh, than we have until now. Uh, so I would suggest that all of us go through the document again and so on, and then we discuss it either in the meantime, before the next CC meeting or at the next CC meeting. But generally speaking, I think it's a great push forward for DM25. And what I like is that it is long term, so it's not short term, but it actually takes into account the next more than a year, I would say. Yeah. Thanks, Rajko. I agree completely. I mean, I'd go further and say that nothing can happen, no political progress can be made until we bring European communities on side, until they feel that we reflect their concerns and those that are most immediate to them, but also until we're able to instill them with a more kind of internationalist, transnational perspective on the local struggles that they face. So this work is absolutely critical, I think, to us as a movement and to the future of Europe, if we can be so ambitious and bold uh, in our plans. So. Moving on from that agenda item, thank you so much, Eric. Uh, is there any other business? Looks like we're, Ivana's very excited. Ivana? I have a very short, uh, hopefully, any other business topic. As you know, uh, I've been in touch uh, with our foreign policy thematic DSC, and uh, they've been doing an incredible work so far, and uh, they would like to lead an initiative uh, to make a foreign policy a pillar. So uh, 
they would, as thematic DSCs are not writing our policies, they would form, and they already did uh, form a, uh, like a task force in charge of the questionnaire. And uh, if the CC agrees, it would be up to us to pass this uh, decision whether or not to make it a pillar to the VC. And then we would proceed with, with publishing the questionnaire and so on. So does this sound all right to you? And uh, shall we proceed? I am absolutely in favor of it. And same, I say it is <laughs> same, also in favor. Yeah, me too. It, this, is a, this is an excellent idea. Thank you all. Me three, absolutely. I think foreign policy is, uh, is an area on which we could really use uh, a, a common uh, stance and it will be very hard to find one. So I wish them the best of luck uh, in trying to collate the opinions of all our members. <laughs> And one issue uh, that is uh, currently very active on the forum is the Israel-Palestine issue again. I think that uh, this is something that we should probably discuss apart. I mean, obviously, it has to somehow fly, flow into the final paper once it's ready, but maybe we should have a separate uh, member vote about that uh, even before the, the pillar is finished, uh, based on the discussions that are currently happening in the forum. Yes, I agree with you, Dieter, and I think that uh, the way that this discussion is uh, evolving, developing in the forum is uh, leading towards a couple of stands that we could uh, choose from. So I even think that it could happen in another month or so, or period of debate to be over the summer, but not necessarily that long. So uh, we can have an informed all member vote at the end of this debate. So yeah, I also think it's a very good idea. Brilliant, that's very exciting news indeed. Is there any other, other business before we conclude? Eric, were you moving your hand or you just moving? Yeah, all right. Well, thank you all for joining us for yet another CC meeting and we'll see you next week. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. See ya.